Nation, it's your boy AJ, it's Nest News, hashtag we go hard. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe if you're new, hit the notification bell for any breaking Nets news, and follow me on Instagram at Nets Kingdom 711. So, there's so much to get into with the off season after being depressed for a few days. I'm back again. I want to thank you all for the kind words and support y'all have given me this season. Shout out all my day ones and Nets Nation. So, the off season schedule. Uh, if you look up on the screen, we have July 29th is the NBA draft. So that whole week, I'll drop some draft content streams, etc. We have four draft picks in this draft. So super exciting on what we're going to do, what Sean Marks is going to do. We might even have a watch party, so stay tuned for that. Then we have free agency. Free agency on August 3rd to August 6th at 12.01 is when teams can start signing free agents. That's when the NBA allows us to find our gems in the um in the free agent market so those are the dates july 29th august 3rd draft free agency for our off season the big dates now let's for right now let's focus on what sean marks has to do before the draft now the first order of business for the nets is negotiating extensions for the big three kevin durant has two years left on his contract with a player option for the 2022 2023 season he will become eligible this offseason to sign a four-year 192.5 million extension this offseason it would run through the 2025 to 2026 season and have his 42 million player option for 2022-23 replaced and also Kyrie and harden are also eligible for extensions Now, it's not a must. We don't have to extend the big three right now. Don't panic, y'all. They all have two years left on their contracts. But it would be nice to know if they all chose to extend it this year. Um, It would mean they're committed in the long run. Now, logging up all three of the off um the big three this off season to their respective maximum amounts would align them all through the 2025 26 season also all three players would make at least 50 million that season um one of the lo- expensive <laughs> nba rosters in history but now we look at the roster right here we have for this upcoming year now i'll show you guys right here the eight players we have under contract in this graphic um we have landry Sh- we got the big three obviously we got Landry Shamit, we got um, Nicholas Claxton, and we got Alizé Johnson, and we got Joe Harris and DeAndre Jordan. Now, those are the guys that we have under contract. Now, a lot of Nets fans want to sign the big stars and sign this, sign that, but our cap space is very, very bad. We don't have any cap space. We are over the cap and in debt <laughs> so our salary situation as you guys see right here our guaranteed salary is 154 million non-guaranteed 1 million total salary amount is 156 million luxury tax we're 19 million over the luxury tax for a, a 44 million that's the debt 44 million payment then we have one exception uh taxpayer mid-level which is a five million dollar uh, exception so as you can see we cannot really sign a lot of big stars like i said most of the guys we have to get are free agent um cheap free agent deals um free agent minimum guys or we go in the draft and build through the draft those are really our options unless we trade now let's talk about the pieces that the nest need to make a decision um, first things first, Spencer Dinwiddie is expected to decline his $12.3 million player option and become an unrestricted free agent. Luckily for him, the point guard market will be strong, so there's a good chance that he might not lose any money in his next contract. Now, if Dinwiddie wants to join an over-the-cap team while earning market value, that would require the Nets to cooperate in a sign-and-trade over-the-cap teams or teams with contenders, such as the Suns, Lakers, Clippers, Bucks, Celtics, This could allow Brooklyn to generate a trade exception and potentially get a veteran young player or first round pick after all Brooklyn has done it for Spencer. It will be nice to leave us with a sign and trade for our troubles so we don't lose him for nothing. But in my opinion, I think Spence will leave. um, um, I don't think we'll... It depends what... Sean Marks got to talk to him because if if Spencer is nice to us, he he will get a sign and trade. He will cooperate and do a sign and trade. If he doesn't really care, then he'll just leave for another team for the big bag. And if you guys don't know, Spencer's worth 14 to 7 million according to executives. I think Spencer wants about 20 million. But again, now as far as people that I would want 
for um, Spencer. If we do decide to sign a trade for Spencer, um, I would like another shot creator because we're going to need somebody off the bench to get their own bucket. And remember, we don't have Tyler Johnson. We don't have Mike James. We don't have um, we only have those eight guys I showed you on the on on the um, on the um roster. So I want either a shot creator or a solid 3 and D wing player. So um, I know people want a center. But, you know, I feel like we can get a center and if there's a lot of centers in the free agent that's going to come out this free agent market. You know, we can get a center in draft. We got a first round. So I feel like the center part is is the more important part is three and D guys because those are harder to come by. Guys that can hit threes and play defense on the wing is very hard. It's hard to come by in this league. So that is what we should, I think, get Um will be our mission you know our biggest team need three and d guys um a rebounding center and um a shot creator off the bench a point guard uh, the guy who can you know get his own shot when harden comes out or let's say Kyrie or harden goes down a guy that can get his own shot off the bench you know that we don't have to rely on just one star to do everything um now as far as guys i've looked at for the sign and trade i would like um um we have um, Kendrick Nunn, you know, Kendrick Nunn, maybe we can trade um, Spencer for Kendrick Nunn. You know, Kendrick Nunn averaged 14 points off the bench, shooting 40% from three this year, had an amazing year from the Miami Heat. He would be an option for another shot creator we can trade Spence for him and some picks. Uh, Dallas, we got Dorian Finley Smith, Josh Richardson. They're still on contract, but I think that if Spencer would like to go to Dallas, I think that's a good match because, um, again, Dallas is looking for another guy that can get buckets besides Luka and, you know, score off the bench, average 20. Maybe we can do a sign and trade for Dorian Finney or somebody they can, you know, finesse the Dallas Mavericks to give us um, Dorian Finney-Smith. And they, in return, they, we get spent, um, they get Spencer. But, again, this is all depending if Spencer agrees to it. We don't know for sure if he will agree to um, do a sign and trade. He could just leave us for nothing. That's the thing. He could just leave us for nothing. If that's the case, you know, we just kind of have to deal with it. I, honestly, if Spencer stayed with us, then he would actually hurt our cap. You know what I'm saying? He would, if we re-signed Spencer, it would hurt our cap, and we would have less money to sign, you know, Jeff Green, Bruce Brown, all these guys he want back. Um now, Blake Griffin. Blake Griffin's going to be a free agent. I think Blake is the most likely guy to come back because he is cheap. He wants to win. He knows the potential for our team. So I feel like Blake will sign anything. Blake will play. Blake will take a cheap deal because Detroit is paying him that big money next year. So I feel like he's probably the easiest guy that we can get back. He's not going to really care about money in, in the long run. I don't think so. Um, now, Bruce Brown, one of Brooklyn's most pleasant surprises for the season, is entering a restricted free agency. He, uh, he was a sneaky great addition for the Nets who stepped up when our stars missed time. You guys know how Bruce was. But again, Bruce can get offered more money. Now, we can go over the cap with Bruce because we got his bird rights. But again, that's the luxury tax. We will take another hit with the cap on luxury tax. It depends if Josiah wants to pay that money. If Josiah doesn't care and pay that money, then we can re-sign Bruce to a, a long-term deal or um, give him something. Or maybe Bruce will be nice to us and get a team-friendly deal so we can get other people because our cap, we're in cap hell already. Um, Jeff Green. Jeff Green's a free agent. He shot a career high 41% from three-point range this season, added a few highlight dunks. After signing with Brooklyn for the veterans minimum, Green will earn a pay raise this summer. Executives estimate his value at a currently at three to six million. Now we know Jeff wants more money. He's been taking veteran minimum deals for the past four years, and you know he wants to get paid. He loves Brooklyn. Don't get me wrong, he loves Brooklyn. He wants to get paid, but he wants to get paid. So, if there's any guy that I would take to get a pay raise, or if we had to dig deep into a, like an exception and give Jeff, I would I would give Jeff that money. He is probably the most um, guy I'm worried about leaving. Now, ranking my priorities and re-signing our key um, free agents, Jeff, number one, I think Bruce, number two, and then Blake this is the last priority because I think Blake is just going to sign with us because, again, he's getting huge money from Detroit, so he's not going to really care about if we give him, like, 500000 or, you know, 600000 for a year. He's not going to care because he knows he's on Brooklyn Nets. He knows he's going to be in the, in the playoffs, the finals. He knows that. Now, let me know in the comments who's the most important to you on keeping the, on the Nets, Jeff or Bruce, in my opinion. I feel like Blake will sign for anything dirt cheap as long as he's on the Brooklyn Nets team. 
So I'm not worried about him leaving as much. But between Bruce and Jeff, those guys had amazing years. Both could leave for more money. They both said they want to stay in Brooklyn, but they can get offered more money. Again, their 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 their, their seasons were so good that their price rose up. You know, I, the Pelicans are looking at Bruce. They might offer him the bag. Uh, Jeff might get offered a big bag. You know, you never know. Maybe like not huge, but maybe like two years, um, sixteen mil, something. You know, eight million dollars a year around that range. You know, but even that, we can't pay Jeff that. Jeff has to take at least like a one to five. And Bruce, we got Bruce's bird right, so we can go over the cap with him. But still, maybe he doesn't, um, maybe he wants a long, long term deal. And maybe Joe Sy doesn't want to pay the luxury tax because he's already in luxury tax. Um, he, he's already getting so much debt. So let me know in the comments if you had to make a choice, would you to keep Jeff or Bruce? Um, and then Spencer, we all know Spencer's probably going to leave us, but it's the point of we got to watch is if Spencer gets signed and traded, we got to watch out for that, see what happens in the next few days. As far as the offseason goes, I feel like we should bring those um, our veterans back, Jeff and Blake, possibly Bruce, let Spencer go, and then we'll just reshape the team after that. I'll be dropping a free agent tracker, free agent video for who our biggest team needs are um, in, a, in a few days. I just want to... Um, give you guys a good off-season preview where off-season is headed again we got the draft july 29th we got free agency august so i will uh be updating you guys um every step of the way um let me know in the comments you guys hit me up on instagram that's kingdom 711 hit that like button it's your boy aj it's nest news holla at me i'm out